Well, just woke up. Time to get ready. We have a wedding to shoot today. Um, so we got a lot of, uh, gonna get my bags packed and get everything ready. And then uh, see how things are gonna go today. So stay tuned. <laughs> We're a couple of hours in at the wedding. It's been going good today. Me and my wife, who's my second shooter, we've been doing shooting with Fuji today. So, whoop, I'm gonna drop my phone. So you can tell this is on the fly, in the field. So, um, yeah, shooting with Fuji. I got my X-T2 with the battery grip, 17 to 70. And we've been shooting a um, little bit of everything. So product shots, you know, the bride and groom, speeches. Um, next up will be the dances and the party time so that's that's what's next for us so stay tuned and then um, I'll kind of talk about all the gear and all the preparation it took to get to this point so uh, see you on the next video peace So we're back. I'm back home, finished the wedding. It was a long day, but it was a good day. I feel like we did a lot of good things, had a lot of great shots. Um, I did bring the Lomo inst Instant Auto Mat and I shot Instax Mini Film. And I did give that to the bride. So what I did was I went to the craft store and I got a metal tin and some heart you know, some heart stickers that was silver to match the tin, which was metal. And I shot, you know, pull, you know, Instax minis all night, kept them in my front pocket. And then when I was done, you know, at the end of the night, I put them in the tin and gave them to the bride. And I think she was very happy with it. Um, a very successful night. That was my first time shooting instant film on a paid job. And it worked out really well. Um, I think there's something that, you know, at an event I could do more of. It kind of makes it feel like, a, inst like a, a mobile photo booth in a way. And I think that's a value proposition for you as a event photographer, a wedding photographer, because, you know, they're going to see it as an extra, you know, like an add on. So I could even, you know, kind of sell a package, you know, for that. And I think I might do that in the future. Um, I would have liked to shot the Lomo Instant Wide though and give them a bigger, you know, a bigger frame to work with. But the mini, the advantage of the mini is that the camera, cameras that shoot mini are smaller. They're easier to carry, you know, but I think I would have liked to have the wide. So I think next time I'm going to use my, my double strap and then have the, um, yeah, have, use the double strap. My leather, I have like this leather, you know, holster and it has holes for two cameras. So I'll keep my main camera on one and I'll have the, you know, instant, you know, Lomo Insta wide on the other and um, I can get those wide films out. So I think it was really good. Um, so I brought like nine batteries. I had the XC2 with the battery grip and I shot, you know, with that. Um, I probably went through two batteries, two bat, yeah, two extra batteries. Um, my wife had the Fuji XS10. She went through about three batteries. Um, I did have a charger in my bag, and so I recharged while we went. So I had a USB charger for, you know, those Fuji batteries. Plugged it into a power bank. Had it in the bag. So while while you know two was charging. You know, we took out two that were fresh and then, you know, we kept just swapping it like that. So um, it worked out. It did scare me because I used some aftermarket batteries and it seems like the ones that were in there were not working with the charger, but it did work with it. It just didn't tell you whether it was fully charged or not, which was not good. Gives you a little bit of anxiety with that. But um Thankfully, it worked out and we made it through the day with no problem. So um, I did bring the X-Pro2 
as a sec as a backup in case a camera failed. We had the XT2 and the 23 F2 and the 50 F2 as a backup kit. I had the XT2 with the Tamron 17 to 70, and then my wife had the Fuji XS10 with the 18 to 50 mil Sigma, and we just shot standard zoom for the most part. You know, we didn't need much telephoto. I brought the Viltrox 85, but didn't end up using it because we were able to use our feet to get the shots we wanted and to just kind of zoom in on the long end of our zoom lenses and compress and get what we needed to. A um, lot of fun. So, um, yeah, got to work on these, you know, work on these uh, shots and try to deliver um, in the next couple of weeks. We probably took in total over 2,000 shots. It was a seven hour day. And so we got a lot of shots between all the different things that took place and, you know, um, you know, between the two of us, you know, together. So I probably shot about 1,200 of those 2,000, something like that. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. What's going on everybody? Jason back in not the basement. I'm in the studio now. So um, in my new home, my new location, I now have a little space that I can you know, set up as a studio when I need to. So right now I have it set up with a black background um, and I have some you know, flash stand, you know, stands, you know, flashes, things like that. Um, and I was uh, over the weekend, I just finished the wedding. So I thought about wedding photography tips slash event photography tips and so i thought i'd write them down and you know share it with people because i feel like that's the point of the you know of youtube is to share information help other people you know get along with what they're trying to do as well in photography we learn from each other right so what are photography tips number one timeliness you gotta be on time right on time is late and early is on time, right? So always try to arrive early, try to scope out the scene. Sometimes you don't get a chance to really interact with the location um, or, the, or the wedding party because it's far away or whatever reason. So if you get there early, you get more comfortable. And if you get more comfortable, you'll take better photos. So I think getting there early and really focusing on, you know, uh, just setting up and like, you know, talking with people, you know, there's other vendors there too, like the DJ, you know, the, you know, the caterers, if there's a catering company, get to know everyone, build a rapport, figure out locations. Like say you got a lot of bags as well. You get a chance to find out where you want to put those bags. So, you know, get there early and make sure that you, you know, just get yourself comfortable. So that's the first tip. Uh, the next tip is have lots of batteries. No matter what camera you have, if you got great battery life or not, um, battery grips, etc., just bring a lot of batteries. And also, I recommend finding a way to keep those batteries charged that are getting used. So the ones that are getting dead as you use them and you change out to new batteries, if you got a battery solution that has a USB and a power bank, Plug those things up together, leave it in your bag somewhere safe to let those things charge up and you'll be comfortable for the, for the rest of your shoot because as you're using one battery, another one is charging. So just in case things go longer than they, they do or you shoot more shots than you think you were, you've got enough batteries to cover it. And so you got to have lots of batteries. Um, I brought to my wedding over the weekend, I brought a total of seven batteries. Uh, one of my cameras, I used the Fuji X-T2, and I had the battery grip, so I had three batteries at a time. My wife, who was my second shooter, had her XS10, and she has one battery and had one on her just in case, you know, you're in between that low battery sign, you switch it out when you need to, and then the other one goes in, in a, kind of a secure third bag that we had where the chargers are kind of take care of those. So everything was working out great. So have lots of batteries, highly recommend, and ways to charge those batteries. Okay, uh, next tip, I got a book by the way, so I am reading this. You know, I do this, this is, this is not scripted stuff here, yo. This is all 
you know, real, real life stuff. So next tip, communication. Have a game plan with your team. And me and my wife, we both, you know, had a game plan about how we were going to shoot, what we were going to, you know, what places we were going to stand so we don't interfere with each other's shots, what shots are critically important. We also had a shot list from the bride, so we knew that already, but there could be other things that she ain't, she's not considering. And, you know, as we see a situation arise, what we think is important, you know, who are the important people in the, in the, you know, the guests, like there are people in the wedding party, you know, they're important, but there are also guests who are important who may not be in the wedding party. The grandparents, aunts and uncles who might be very close, cousins, lifelong, lifelong friends, you know, things like that. People you haven't seen in a while. And when you see them, they embrace with this big, you know, enthusiasm. You got to capture those things, right? You got to know as much as you possibly can what's happening. And sometimes you just don't know, but you also got to pay attention and you got to communicate with your team. You know, they could be, you know, 15 feet away from you and you just kind of get that signal, like, you know, point over there, like, you got that? And, and then, you know, everything is all good. Um, so, yeah, got to communicate. Um, that's number, that's a very important one. All right, next tip kind of goes along with communication, but teamwork, work as a team. If you shoot in a wedding, the our wedding we were booked for was seven hours. It was a long day, uh, a great day, but a long day. And so you've got to have teamwork. You're going to need times to take, you know, breaks for bathroom breaks, time to eat. Uh, could be a wardrobe, you know, I'm working with my wife. She's a woman, sometimes wardrobe. She needs to fix herself, get, you know, freshen up a bit. You know, I need to take, you know, a bathroom break myself. You know, maybe I'm running low on energy, so I need to go grab a little snack bar, you know, while something's happening that I don't know might not be happening. So work as a team, right? Never try to do things solo. Really, you know, lean on each other to have each other's back when you're doing a wedding, right? It's a team, it's a team sport, you know? Event photography, wedding photography, if you're not doing it by yourself, it then becomes a team sport. So work as a team. Who's running the point guard? You know, who's going to be the center, right? Figure that out. Have that ahead of time as well, but also be able to be the flex while you're in the, in the field, right? All right, next, next thing is, I just touched on a little bit. You got to be flexible. One thing I know about event photography, especially weddings, things never go as planned, right? A lot can go as planned, and if they do, that's great because you got all the information up front. You know who the important people are. You've got a shot list from the bride, all these things. But some things just happen. You got to be flexible. You got to be able to move. You might notice that, like, for instance, this weekend, we noticed that there was a gazebo um, in the backyard of the, of the bride's um, parents' house. That's where the wedding was. And so that was never really discussed prior to showing up for the wedding or to having calls about the wedding. But we noticed that that's a great place to take photos. So, you know, we you know, tried to take advantage of it as much as possible. Um, in other, other situations, like knowing where to stand, knowing how much light there actually is or not. And those things you have to be flexible on, right? You got to know how to like adjust on the fly. You might have plans to use, you know, flash at night, but not realizing that there's certain pockets in, you know, the, the wedding and the, the, there was a tent outside that had enough light that you really didn't need, need to use flash all the time. And that ends up saving you battery life. And so in that regard, you know, flex, flex and understand what's needed. I can work with a slower shutter speed and bump the ISO up a little bit, you know, instead of having flash and disturbing people as they have a conversation, for instance, and get those candid shots. So you got to be flexible, be flexible. Okay. Um, next tip is have fun. Remember, you got into photography because you enjoy it. So don't be so businesslike every single second. When you're having fun and you're making things less stressful and you're, you're enjoying what you're doing, that energy is going to come across to your to your bride, to whoever it is in the event that is important. And you want that to carry across as much as possible because 
it makes for better photos. And that's your bottom line. The bottom line is you want great photos. So you want everybody to be relaxed. You want everybody to, you know, feel like you, you enjoy your job and you're happy to be here. And you are because you love photography. You're doing this, obviously you're getting paid, but you love photography. So enjoy the process, have fun. Okay, and my last tip is don't be afraid to go above and beyond for your event slash, you know, wedding or bride. Um, one of the things I decided to do was uh, shoot instant photography simultaneously as I was shooting digitals. Um, so I brought an instant film camera. I brought a Lomography instant auto mat, which uses the Instax minis. And I brought about 40, um, 40 shots with me, brought 40 packs of film, well, 40 shots total, which is four packs of film because it's 10 in each pack. Um, so I shot about that and got through about 30 of them, you know, throughout the whole seven hours. So I shot, you know, strategically, digital primarily, obviously, because that's what they pay for. Um, but I said, you know what, I'm going to throw in a nice, you know, set of Instax prints to go with it because, you know, they were, they were so great about everything. They were, you know, just seemed like a fun thing to give them on the day of while they wait for digitals. They could have this uh, gift of some instant prints to take home that night. And so while I was shooting it all night, I was just sticking the Instax Mini in my top, you know, shirt pocket. And then at the end of the night, I had a, a nice metal tin, you know, metal round tin. And I got some silver heart stickers and I kind of stuck them around the whole thing. And then I gifted, you know, that to her with the, you know, with the shots inside of them. So I thought it was a great thing. It's something nostalgic. You know, it's not professional. Like instant photos are not about being professional, but it's about moments, right? Moments that maybe even the, even the, digital photography might not have gotten the same way, right? You know, those are going to be much more clean and curated, but those are going to be more nostalgic. They can put them in, you know, on their refrigerator the same night or take them on, you know, when they go on their honeymoon, they can take it with them and take a look at it, you know, before they get the final digital images. So, so yep, that's all I got. I just wanted to share those tips. Um, if you have any further tips, what's your experience with event photography, do you find it difficult? If you got any questions for me, I'm here to I'm here to answer them. So I will talk to you guys on the next time and peace.